as we getting ever closer to the main seasons of mushroom foraging and fishing I want to talk to you about an, an important aspect of it and that is scouting or exploring if you want to begin with a hobby like mushroom foraging or fishing or you just started and don't know how to start scouting is a very important aspect is to find new hotspots or new places where you might find things or even with fishing maybe to find a new place where you want to fish or maybe someone said oh there's an area that's productive but I believe it is important before you start actually looking to scout it out and see if it has potential viability so this morning I wanted to show you a place where I intentionally done some scouting so I want you to we take have our first edible mushroom just walking along a little track here with a beautiful loch which we also will cover later when I attempt to do some pike fishing here I saw a guy he caught a little a little pike green pike so I might take my spinning rod and see if there's any bigger ones in there looks lovely though so I'm also new in this area so I have to do a lot of scouting and so I've been here a couple of times and and uh, I want to show you something. Yeah, I found a little group of elder trees and I actually saw on there still some dried, what do you call them, juice ears, mouse ears, jelly ears, jelly fungus. So, and that's an elder tree. So, how do we know it's an elder tree? Okay, we can see the leaves. They're quite typical. Uh, I can't see any flowers in there yet. So the best way to to identify an elder tree is just break up a branch. Oh, that was not a good one. Let's see if we can get a better one. Yeah, that looks reasonably good. So basically elder the stem has a spongy inside so the outside is hard but the inside is like a sponge or sometimes it's hollow and this is how you can tell if it's an elder tree so normally yeah there yeah, you can see the little buds coming up which have white flowers I will try to show you later if I find a different one white flowers and the white flowers will then turn into black berries where you can make some lovely wine so you have we use like a dried juice here, mouse here which you still could pick, I still got loads of them at home you still can pick them is this type of mushroom is probably the only species where you can dry them rehydrate them, freeze them and they come back to its normal state so unless you know another one please leave it in the comment that's the only one I know and here we have loads more elder trees but I really can't see any white flowers in there yet I can see a lot of, lot of buds on there let's see if I can drag one down It. So they will have white flowers and see if we can find another bigger stem or something. Yeah, yeah you maybe can see it better here. Yeah, it's got a soft inside and this is how you can tell it for an elder. There's some more jelly fungus hanging there. 
and jelly fungus it's also a medicinal mushroom or fungus it has 16 plus vitamins and minerals and it's a very good edible yeah of course if you like it there are two types we can find here in Britain there's the black one and the brownish one the black one is more on the rare side but it's more common in the Asian cuisine you can buy it online the black one or you can get them in restaurants but I prefer the brown one and also I, I don't really like eating it but I like to make uh, a drink from it a health drink from it and that be another video which would be coming up so yeah as we go further along there be more and more of this elder tree so and for me that's the hot spot so basically yeah in the winter time or comes autumn late open winter times this is where the mouse here or juice here uh, really starts going when there's lots of moisture around a lot of rain and and even the winter time they're going to be very in, sometimes in masses so uh, that's not elder but of course you always can go and look for, for other things that might grow so you either can make a mental note or you write it down for future explorations lovely little loch here yeah? Yeah, just out for a walk. So, yeah, we're definitely going to be do some fishing here. Uh. Yeah, so that's an intentional scouting. So, but sometimes also it happens unintentional scouting so and see what happens next so yeah and and it's a dry saddle and it's beautiful the large one is a bit too old but we have some smaller ones here which we can take I haven't got my knife with me because I'm just out for a walk. So, yeah, that's brilliant find. Now we leave this one standing, it's a bit big. Let's have a look if there's any more in there. No, that's it. Ah, oh, there's one little bit more up here. Ah, oh, that's perfect. If I can get it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, nice find. Just scouting around and see if I can find any more. So there might be an area where there could be some more uh, fungi. I'm back home and I brought the mushrooms that I found today with me. And so let's have a look at the ID, how we can identify these. Try it, settles are actually a beginner's mushroom there is really nothing else like it so yeah so let's have a look at these all right on the first look you can it's a bit scaly it, it looks a bit like a pheasant really <laughs> uh, so that's a giveaway and uh, yeah that's a real giveaway. A bit looks like a pheasant. Then the stem. It's thick. Thick stem. 
and as it goes yeah and uh, it darkens as you go I mean, we couldn't see the base really but it could go up to black on the base uh, that's another key feature it's got white flesh stringy flesh and the pores which are actually on, on the surface here they're off-white creamy color so that's another key uh, identification feature so overall yeah this is quite easy to identify let's have a smell it could be a bit like a watermelon uh, uh, yeah it, it's it's an edible mushroom I take it home regularly if I find it in the spring it grows from May to August roughly and it's not a gourmet mushroom but you can mix it with other mushrooms and uh, so it's a nice it's got a firm texture uh, overall it's a nice good edible mushroom so yeah so first one for the day I was quite surprised I, I didn't actually look for mushrooms uh, well, I always I'm always scouting when, when I'm out and about always looking around and see what's out there so yeah nice session of the subject of uh, scouting out for either fungi or fishing. Uh, I just want to point out that in principle it's all applies to the same whether you go mushroom hunting or fishing. Especially if you're looking for a specific mushroom like for instance the saffron milk cap which you specifically only find under pine trees. So if you haven't got any pine trees in your area, you will not find them. It's the same if you go out fishing, you're looking for a rat for instance, you're looking over sandy ground, it's not going to happen I don't think. So you got to do a bit of research into trees or mushroom in relationship with trees. The same with fishing, see what the fish, what, over what ground they, they normally hang around, where they're feeding what food source so same as mushrooms see what they're growing on so yeah research is, is paramount so and then you can do your scouting and trying to find find where where they might hang around or so yeah so preparation is key so and at the end of the session I post some pictures with some descriptions so I will end the session from here. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. If you like, give me the thumbs up. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. Something else to, to this video. On occasions when I go out mushroom foraging and people ask me, are, are you foraging for mushrooms? I say yes. And they keep saying, isn't this dangerous? So, yes, it is dangerous, but not as dangerous as driving a car. And they say, how come? And they say, it's very simple. You, le you learn to drive, you follow all the rules and regulations, you go out on the road, you make sure that you're safe and you keep others safe. But what about the other road users? Are they having the same intention? They might, but some of them might be careless. And it could be an accident, it could be fatal. So really you're only 50% in control of what happens down on the road. The other 50% is up to the other road users. So when you go out mushroom foraging, you're 100% in control. If you follow all the rules and guidelines, and you're going to be safe. Yeah, I've been foraging now for many many years I've never been ill, never been sick so if you're a beginner or you want to start there are courses online they also do tours 
nationwide or just ask for help if you know other mushroom forager ask them if you can jo if you can join them maybe they will help you with identifications and help you to find maybe some beginners mushrooms so you build you build up your knowledge it's 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 not happening in an, in a week's time or in a month's time it takes sometimes years to build up your knowledge i'm not a professional so i'm only out for mainly for gourmet mushrooms the one i really like to eat i i, I do know others but so it doesn't mean you find some edible mushrooms you have to eat them most of most of them i don't want to eat them <laughs> because it tastes horrible yeah you can try maybe once but so yeah if you're in control, you stay safe and you won't get sick. So, okay, thanks again for watching and see you next time.